Okay, this is uh, Duncan Foley and we're going to do a tutorial that looks at uh, how loops work within uh, VAL3. Uh, we're first we're going to create a uh, carry on from uh, previous work. We've uh, done our input output. I'm going to uh, right click and add a new application. I'm going to call this loop. Okay. And we've got our loop application in here. Uh, I'm in the geometry, so I'll just go to the uh, Cell Explorer, make sure I'm working on the, uh, the loop application, open up the program, and I'm going to copy and paste uh, the program that uh, we've got in the uh, accompanying, accompanying um, booklet. So what this program does, it, uh, it has a, a a num variable which starts at 1 and goes to 10 so it's going to go around this uh, for end loop 10 times first thing it's going to do is going to move to uh, j start uh, we have a tool called t tool and it's going to move to j start uh, at uh, a motion descriptor defined by m fast so move j again to an approach point approach point of pick 1 the distance from pit 1 is going to be defined by shift 2, which we've normally set to minus 50. Again, it's the T tool, which is basically this half sort from the flange to the tip. And we're going to do it at M slow. Then we're moving in a straight line to P pit 1. Wait until you get to PPIT 1, move to PPIT 2, wait until you get to PPIT 2, move on as, uh, to PPIT 3 and finish. So it's not doing anything particularly challenging here, uh, it's just a matter of introducing you to the for loop, uh, for end loop. Uh, this, uh, this is a completely new application, so none of these uh, variables uh, have been defined, so if I run the uh, uh, check syntax in the val tab. You can see we've got quite a lot of things going on. We've got seven errors, um, which we were expecting. And so if I highlight the I add new data, it's coming up with an unvariable. I'm happy with that. Uh, J start uh, add new data, and it's coming up with a joint RX. You can see these starting to appear. Uh, in the geometry so we've got a J start now there I could if I wanted to click on there and do right click add and then give uh, the the name uh, for uh, type in the name there so P pick one and it's the same thing so if I actually run my syntax check now uh, it's not having a problem with ppip1 because I've defined it in the geometry window. Personally, I prefer to define them all in, in the uh, the program window, um, but it's uh, it's up to you. So I've defined ppip2. Add new data for ppip3. Uh, I know that I haven't defined the motion descriptors as well. So add a motion descriptor. So that should start appearing in our uh, loop motion descriptors. So we've now got M fast. I don't really change the M fast and M slow because we we tend to overwrite them anyway when we go to the uh, to the robot. So I'm just sort of acknowledging the different speed between the two, moving fast and slow. So I still haven't defined T tool and shift, and uh, that was. So where are we? T tool is here. That's correct. And let's just do the um, T shift, which is the the offset value. And remember, it's going to come up with try and tell you it's a, a tool, but it's actually a translation. Uh, what we know about the uh, the, the T shift two. Um, that we're going to give it a minus 50 so it will approach peep it one uh, at minus 50 just above it 
we do know that we, we also need to define uh, this at uh, the T tool and the way we can do that is go to handler right click copy the data I'm just going to go back to my program just so I can see it uh, go to the tool and then paste it in there set on the valve, valve 1 to work and we open in times and close in times in 0.1 seconds another way we could have done that is um, if you're getting comfortable bouncing between applications I could have gone to another application as long as I haven't changed the uh, the tool and looked at uh, the T tool in this one and simply copy and pasted that over to uh, there if you look they're, uh, they're, they're the same it just can get a little bit confusing if you're bouncing between applications so just be wary of that so I think um, hope I've defined everything which I have done uh, in the program uh, but I am taught the program where J star is ppip1, 2 and 3 so let's go here go to the geometry tab I'm on ppip1 um, that's as good as a place as any it doesn't really matter for today right click on it and say here and um, I'm just going to click on the base right click and get a, the joint window up just going to move it around to somewhere over the um, the bump tray I'll define that as ppip2 and I'm just going to move it further around and say that's ppip3 here if I want to remind myself where I said ppip1 was I can right click and move to just check everything uh, is okay okay I just need to define where the start of the uh, uh, robot uh, position is so I'll just go above there and say that's okay and say here Go back to the program, remind yourself that I think I've done everything okay. Yeah, and uh, check one more time. Okay, All right, what we want to do now is uh, run the simulation, see if we can get a slightly better view. Okay, so um, go to the cell controller, right click on there, and we're going to show emulator. If we'd uh, already got the emulator running, I definitely recommend either closing it or restarting it. Um, hopefully, you've got the, uh, the large emulator working. Um, so let's click on the window, press return, return. Uh, I have a USB stick on my computer, that's why it's showing. Uh, I would recommend you don't work off a USB stick. Uh, if you do, please remember to uh, do some safe copy as and if you're moving between the USB and the hard disk. Uh, so there's my loop program, so that's what I want. So let's go to OK. Um, my, uh, my emulator is set to the, uh, to the right position if you need to you just press this to toggle around I'm going to switch it on remember we're in the simulation now, tab now I'm just going to switch the simulation tab on I, I, sh I sh uh, switch on the short traces as well I'll switch the um, simulation on uh, run yes I want to run the uh, loop and hold down the left hand mouse button you can see the trace and it's going from 1 to 2 to 3 back up to J start 1 to 2 to 3 and running at 50% speed so it's gone round twice I'm, I'm going to increase that speed to 100% and uh, sort of get, get it working a little bit faster
Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, click the right uh, key button and expand uh, my uh, loop program. Uh, it tells, tells you the date and time, uh, the global variable. So I've got the flange, got the tool value, the joints, uh, the motion descriptors. Let's go back up here. Um, what I wanted to do is just show you this. As soon as you've got loops and stuff, you, you start getting the plus sign. Um, and if you want to um, expand that, you have to sort of go in there and uh, press, press the right hand uh, uh, button on the keypad. If you, if you finish with your uh, traces, you can clear traces. And uh, that's a, a brief introduction to uh, loops. Uh, if you're feeling uh, adventurous, you could uh, look at uh, changing the program so that uh, you start at JSTAR, go to the approach PPIP1, go to PPIP1, and then uh, we'll, we'll progress on how to open and close grippers, but imagine you've uh, closed the gripper, then you would go back up to approach PPIP1, move to P approach PPIP2, go down to PPIP2, then go back up to approach PPIP2 and then move to approach PPIP3 and then go down to PPIP3, go back up to PPIP3 approach and finish. Okay, so um, adding all that in, uh, you can see that we've gone J start, uh, approach to PPIP1, go down to PPIP1, then go back at, out from PPIP1 to the approach position Go to PP2, approach, linear movements to PP3, and so forth. So we've uh, we've sort of gone added to our code. Uh, we, this, there's no new variables in there, so if we do a syntax check, um, it won't have any issues. I'm going to run the program now. Uh, I've just moved this tab along to the second from the right. I'm going to, yeah, I've got show traces on application, press return. I'm going to run my program now. Yes, the loop. Uh, press hold down the move button because I'm, I'm on the second one. I don't have to keep it held down. And you can see what it's doing is uh, it's going, um, going to the approach position down. Uh, it's not playing particularly well with the, uh, the screen capture software uh, and it running in the background. Um, but it, you can just yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's working okay. Yeah, so it's literally coming just above the points, then in a linear straight down, straight down, and then straight down, and then going back up to the start position. Okay, uh, that's our loops, um, and uh, hope hope you uh, understand everything there. Uh, thank you.